Hey, what is up, JG? It is your man here, Javid Man. And in today's video, guys, I'm gonna be playing a little different on some parts. Yes, in today's video, guys, I'm gonna be playing Please Wake Up. Now, I made sure to read a little things about this, and there's a thing with the illusions. Now, there's a possibility people can get seizures and other stuff like that, including my own. I don't have anything that, you know. But, you see here it says play with illusions on. I have that unchecked because I personally do not want to seizure you guys out. But I will be putting a warning in the start of the video as you've already seen. So, other than that, let's get a new game and uh, see how the game is. Because I just want to branch out my content from Roblox because... Though Roblox is fun and all, I am getting older and I feel like I should spread out my own content, you know? Which in return, be Grissom. Alright, let's get into the video, guys. New game. Establish connection. Establishing connection. Are you able to read this? Uh, yes. Please respond with a no. A no. Please respond with a yes. Yes. Please respond with a no. Beginning cognitive test. Does 2 plus 3. Is the Monopoly man's monocle bigger than his hat? No. Is the ocean red? No. Here is George's tail shorter than his finger? He doesn't have a tail, which is actually fun. Is a shoe smaller than a house? No. A shit has complete conjunctive testing. Conjunctive testing. Beginning self identify. Is your name Thomas Mandel? Yes. Are 13 years old? Yes. Were you born in Wyoming? Yes. Is your mother's first name? Yes. Oh, wow, really? Whoa, that is cool. I wasn't expecting that. I, th I thought it was like supposed to be in the game. That's why I was answering yes. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, yes. Your brainwave indicate that you are currently hallucinating or dreaming. You do not know what you may currently be ex experiencing, but it is very important that you follow m my instructions in order to wake up. It is very wise that you have recently explained or experienced a loss of identity to help you regain your identity. We will be stimulating your... Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. To re react to memory of the events leading up to your identity loss. Due to the nature of your specific circumstances, your mind may attempt to alter these memories. Do not let your mind after alter these memories. If the memory becomes too unsta unstable, you may be unable to wake up. Is this message understood? Yes. Great. Memory simulation will begin in three, two, one. Let's do this, guys. Uh. Look around. Sound will get louder the more objects have changed. So those three. I want you to take a good look. At oh, your... that's scary. Pay very close attention to the things around you. Now, close your eyes. If you're indoors, do you remember what color the walls are? Do you remember where the lights are? If something in your surroundings were to change, like the texture of the ceiling or the position of items in front of you, would you... That's slanted. We like to believe that our memories perception form true Lift. snapshots of Earth. Whiteboard. But upon closer inspection, Two lights. we begin to see that Lock. they are just fragile fabrications constructed by our brains. On today's episode of the Natural Sciences Podcast, we will explore the nature of our memories, perception and the brain what 
there's always there. Memory is something that we rely on each and every day. On a basic level, we use it to help locate our keys and to remember computer passwords. However, on a more fundamental level, memory plays a key role. Oh. Oh. Holy sh. Oh. Oh my god, if I were new, if I were to know it was this type of game, oh man. Need a level one? My. I want you to take a good look at your surroundings. Nothing. Pay very Old close man. attention to the chair. Now, close your Radio. Oh. If you're indoors, do you remember oh. what color the walls are? There are four lights. Where the lights are. If something All chairs are pushed in, but that change, one. Like this one here is a forest. This one here is a bull of that middle school. We like to and this is Earth. And Both doors are closed. Alright. I For think I got it. Close inspection, we begin to see that they are just fragile fabrications constructed by our brains. Was that there? For today's episode I forgot. of the Natural Sciences Podcast, we will explore the nature of our memories, perception, and the brain. Oh, jeez. Memory is something that we rely on each and every day. On a basic level, we use it to help locate our keys and to remember computer passwords. However, on a more fundamental level, memory plays a key role in our personal identity, beliefs, and behavior. Without memory, we wouldn't have any real connection to the things we've accomplished, the events we've experienced, or the people we love. 17th century British philosopher John Locke argued that personal identity, or the self, is founded on memory. That is to say that your memory is what defines you as an individual over time, not your physical body or soul. Nonetheless, even though we trust our memories to form our beliefs... Right, I'm trying not to talk because he's talking, but this is really sus. To talk about this, we are interviewing Dr. Agatha Cage, a Ain't nothing change. At University of Michigan about the nature of human memory. So what is memory and why is it important? That's a good question. At a basic level, memory is just the way our mind stores and remembers information. However, such a basic definition would understate its importance. We need memories in order to get a basic grasp of the world around us. Memories tell us who we are, the things we've done, and our goals in life. It's difficult to properly convey its meaning to us as human beings, so instead I'll explain it through the story of a man named Scott Bolzan. When Mr. Bolzan was 46 years oh, old, hell no. he had accomplished a lot in his life. He attended Northern Illinois University on a full athletic scholarship and played football professionally for a few years after oh, graduating, my. even briefly playing for the New England Patriots. After an injury that ended his football career, he then became an entrepreneur. He owned and operated a financial planning firm and then became a pilot and ran a successful private jet management company. During this time, he also met and married his wife and oh, his no. two children. However, in December of 2010, oh. he had a workplace accident and lost all of his memories leading up to that point. When he had awoken from the hospital, he didn't even recognize his wife of 25 years. In an interview with ABC News, Mr. Bolzan described the experience as just being lost because he lost who he was. Events such as his first date, his first kiss with his wife, his wedding day, the birth of his children, he had absolutely no recollection of and no emotional attachment to. He was unable to remember any of the important people in his life, his parents, wife, uh, kids, friends, and relatives. Uh, he lost the know-how and ability to run his company. He's quoted as saying, because I have no concept of who I am as a person, oh, I don't hell no. know what my dreams, my aspirations oh, oh. oh my. Right, just be going by too quick. I want you to take right. a good look. Let's clean at this right. Pay very close attention That's to the kind of old and right. Now, close your eyes. If you're indoors, do you remember that eight? what color the walls are? Do you walls are all white. The lights are? Roof if is something brown. in your surroundings is were to that. change, like the texture of the ceiling or Chairs the position of items in front of you, right. would you notice? 
We like to believe that our memory and perception form true snapshots of the world around us. Clean. But upon closer inspection, we begin to see that they are just fragile fabrications constructed by our brains. On today's episode of the Natural Sciences Podcast, we will explore the nature of our hey, memories and perception. Hey, this is getting boring. I'm hearing the same old, same old brain. thing. Oh, nah. He's a real sus, though. Memory is something that we rely on each and every day. On a basic level, we use it to help locate our keys and to remember computer passwords. However, on a more fundamental level, memory plays a key role in our personal identity, beliefs, and behavior. Without memory, we wouldn't Good have thing any real that. connection to the things we've accomplished, the events we've experienced, or the people we love. 17th century British philosopher John Locke argued that personal identity or the self is founded on memory. That is to say that your memory is what defines you as an individual over time, not your physical body or soul. Nonetheless, even though we trust our memories to form our beliefs and identities, our memories themselves are highly error prone. To talk about this, we are interviewing Dr. Agatha Cage, a psychologist at the University of Michigan, about the nature of human memory. So what is memory and why is it important? That's a good question. At a basic level, memory is just the way our mind stores and remembers information. However, such a basic definition would understate its importance. We need memories in order to get a basic grasp of the world around us. Memories tell us who we are, the things we've done, and our goals in life. It's difficult to properly convey its meaning to us as human beings. So instead, I'll explain it through the story of a man named Scott Bolzan. When Mr. Right, Bolzan zoom, was 46 years old, he had and stuff. That's a lot real in sus. his life. He attended Northern Illinois University on full athletic scholarship and played football professionally for a few years after graduating, even briefly playing for the New England Patriots. After an injury that ended his football career, he then became an entrepreneur. He owned and operated a financial planning firm and then became a pilot and ran a successful private jet manager. I looked at that, I was like, oh, wait, hold on a minute. He also <laughs> married his wife and raised his two children. Man, this However, game real in spooky. December 2010, he had a workplace accident and lost all of his memories leading up to that point. When he had awoken from the I think they're talking about me. And recognized his wife of 25 years. In an interview with ABC News, Mr. Bolzan described the experience as just being lost because he lost who he was. Events oh, nothing such as has his changed. First date, his first kiss with his wife, his wedding day, the birth of his children, he had absolutely no recollection of and no emotional attachment to. He was that unable changed. to remember any of the important people in his life his parents, wife, there. kids, friends, and relatives. He the lost the know how and ability to run his company. He's quoted as saying, because I have no concept of who I right, am as a person, I don't know what my dreams are. I get you, I get you, you're trying to scare me or something. Were. That little, wasn't this a little greener? If you lost your oh. Memories, you would lose no, it's that gold, you it's copper-like. Alright. The things that you've accomplished, the relationships you've built, the knowledge that you've acquired, and the formative events that shaped who you are. When we think about what it's like to live without our memories, oh, man. its importance in our lives oh, wait. much more clear. Mr. Bolzan's story is quite compelling. It seems as though memory. Ah! Mother. Hmm. I'm making the same mistakes. So... I got a I beat level one. A good look at your right. This is all Pay white. Very close attention to the things. Church County Middle now, School. That's. Close your eyes. He's got a clean, do you remember they're all squared. What color the walls are? This, do you all right, remember these are like where the orange, are. kind of. In this is like a forest over change, here, literally a planet. This is a white paint, of like cloth. You, these doors are small. We like to believe that our this is a blank chalkboard true that's at eight. The world that's made of but gold and that is clean. Same thing with these two over here. Uh, if I can remember any of them, because... On today's episode of the Natural Sciences Podcast, we will explore the nature Man. of our memories, perception, and the brain. So it's been gone. I know I'm gonna make you guys dizzy by Memory moving my microphone, not each my mic, but my uh, on a basic ca level, my camera view, my mouse, which is what I'm controlling this with. It's gonna However, get confusing. On a more fundamental level, Memory plays a key role in our personal identity, beliefs, and behavior. 
Without memory, we wouldn't have any real connection to the things we've accomplished, the events we've experienced, or uh -huh. the people we love. 17th century British philosopher John Locke argued that personal identity, or the self, is founded on memory. That is to say that your memory is what defines you as an individual over time, not your physical body or soul. Nonetheless, even well, though we trust our memories same. to form our beliefs and identities, our memories themselves are highly error-prone. To talk about this, we are interviewing Dr. Agatha Cage. A like again, I, again, guys, I'm sorry if I'm making you busy, but this of human is scaring me, dog. <laughs> So what is memory and why is it important? I got headphones That's on too, question. so this is even scary. At a basic scary. level, memory is just the way our mind stores and remembers information. However, such a basic definition would understate its importance. We need memories in order to get a basic grasp of the world around us. Memories tell us who we are, the things we've done. I'm double checking everything. <laughs> it's difficult to properly convey its meaning to us as human beings. So instead, I'll explain it through the story of a man named Scott Bolzan. When Mr. Bolzan was 46 years old, he had accomplished a lot in his life. He attended Northern Illinois University on a full athletic scholarship and played football professionally for a few years. After Scott graduate, guy sounds pretty even cool. briefly playing for the New England Patriots. After an injury that ended his football career, he then became an entrepreneur. Yeah, that whole wall turned yellow, so I was like, wait a minute. And then became a pilot and ran a successful private jet management company. During this time, he also met This is getting scary. and raised his two children. However, in December of 2010, he had a workplace accident and lost all of his memories leading up to that point. When he had awoken from the hospital, he didn't even recognize his wife of 25 years. In an interview with ABC News, Mr. Bolzan described the experience as just being lost because he lost Bro, why does it keep changing just events that? Events such as his first date, his first kiss with his wife, his wedding day, the birth of his children, he had absolutely no recollection of and no emotional attachment to. He was unable to remember any of the important people in his life. His parents, wife, kids, friends, and relatives. He lost the know-how and ability to run his company. That guy's He's sad. quoted as and, saying, like, because I have no concept sad, of who I am as a person, I don't know what my dreams, my aspirations, what my goals were. Imagine Bro, this is confusing. This to you. If you lost your memories, you would lose everything that makes you, you. The things that you've accomplished, the relationships you've built, the knowledge that you've acquired, and the formative events that shaped who you are. When we think about what it's like to live without our memories, its importance in our lives becomes much more clear. Mr. Bolzan's story is quite compelling. It seems as though memory is incredibly foundational to our own personal identity. Oh, that's we are squared art. Told that our memories can't be trusted, that they're unreliable. Is that true? Yes, it's more true than most people think. Research has shown us that memories aren't these static snapshots of the world around us. Instead, they're more like malleable stories about the past. I'll go over some well-known research in criminal psychology that demonstrates the fallibility of our memories. The first experiment I'll talk about was conducted no. by Professor Elizabeth Loftus and some of her colleagues at the University of Washington. The setup was pretty simple. Researchers showed participants a video of a car crash. Participants were then asked one of two questions. The first was along the lines of approximately how fast were the cars going when they hit each other. Oh, that's the scary. Was, approximately when the, how fast uh, were the cars chairs going and when stuff, when they turn like each other. rustic and stuff, it looks Despite like a whole horror game. Oh wait, I'm playing a damn horror game. Video, the participants that were asked the second question claimed that the cars were traveling significantly faster than the participants who were asked the first question. A follow-up study showed that when asked a few weeks later oh, whether damn. there broken glass at the scene, the participants who were asked the second what? question were far more more likely to say I clicked the floor though were asked the question. there was no broken glass in the video this study shows that memory is highly suggestible what we think is objective truth about what we have observed is actually what our brains reconstruct and create on the spot Bruh. another series of studies looked at ways to take advantage of errors in this reconstruction of memory otherwise known as confabulation for example, these studies investigate memory implantation techniques that make participants believe they experienced events that never took place. In one such study from psychologists at the University of Bedfordshire, researchers were able to plant rich, false memories into 70% of participants. These memories included things like committing a crime or getting attacked by a dog. All of this implies that our memories aren't just fallible, they're exploitable. Bro, stop our talking and just let me go. This I've, I've done so much. <laughs> us that they're true. Wait a moment. So we've established that memory is fundamental oh. to our experiences and identity. 
We've also established that memory is highly error-prone and flawed. How do we reconcile these two points? How do we know what parts of ourselves are real and what parts aren't? Ultimately, we can't know. Our understanding of ourselves and of the world is fundamentally flawed. In criminal psychology, there Why didn't you guys tell me that while it turned yellow? Jane Come Doe. on now. Initially, her case was used as well-documented proof of repressed memories. In 1984, oh when Jane was six years old, she was interviewed about sexual abuse allegedly committed by her mother. Whoa. The evidence included marks on her hands and feet that resulted from her mother burning them on the stove. Yeah. Eleven years later, though, it seemed as though she had completely forgotten about the incident. Upon viewing the tapes, she vividly remembered the incidents and believed that her mother had chill, chill. her. Most experts to this day don't believe that she was lying. Eight years after that, the report was brought into question. New evidence emerged against Jane Doe's claims. The marks on Jane's oh. hands and feet seemed to actually be the result of a skin infection. Investigators also found two pieces of evidence which called the story into question. The first was a report from a clinical psychologist at the time which suggested that the story was confabulated. The second involved documents from a child protective services investigation in which Jane's mother was not found to have committed any such uh, Ain't nobody care about Jane's right now. Just that hurry up with this. Was in a heated custody battle with her mother. Done so much. I'm gonna lose all of it if I die. <laughs> agree that the abuse likely did not happen and that Jane's false memories came from her father's suggestions when she was young. The consequences of this had huge effects on Jane's life. To this day, she's unsure of what is true and what isn't. If our core memories that shape our identity Bro, these are changing so fast that I'm pretty sure this is like what does this say about us jumping could we just stuff. be an entirely different person than we believe Jane Doe is quoted as saying uh, Jane what Doe. Are we if not our life experiences if we are to believe that those memories are as fallible as some researchers want us to believe they are what does that leave us with what are we doing here oh what is coming out of Tarrant hmm. County Wyoming Police are looking for a missing 12-year-old child named Timothy McCullough, who authorities... Don't you damn do that. He's five feet tall with short brown hair Man, and blue eyes. Man, that scared me, bro. He was last seen wearing a blue t-shirt oh, Stop that, shorts. stop that. Stop, Tours stop, police stop. Say that he may have been with his estranged father, 37-year-old John McCullough, who has recently escaped from prison. If observed, please call 911. <sighs> Yes. Chill, 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 chill. Oh my god. Oh. Well, that was one. How many levels are there? I hope it's not the exact same thing over and we'll get boring. Continue to level. Yes, uh, perception is really a, a oh, thing. Oh man! I think most people take for granted the idea Let's that what we consciously perceive is Body. actually an accurate snapshot of well, reality. Most people seem to think that our perception is just a window into the world up, around us. Danger hazard. Us. Picture my grandpa. Is that not Doors closed. Well, it's pretty clear to tell that Green we don't always running, consciously wheelchair. perceive everything that our brain receives as um, rag. input, right? Skull. If you did, uh, you'd be able to see the blood vessels inside your eyes, and you would always feel your heart beating. But we don't. Oh, what the? Our brain selectively attends to certain aspects of our perception. Oh. Sure, but it's still a form of Yo, reality. chill out with that. Just a snippet of it, right? That doesn't seem right, to right, be the right. case either. I think one of the oh most my. clear ways to show that is through illusions. Um, illusions show us how the brain Coffee alters milk. our reality. Um, since this is a radio show, I, I, I can't really show any optical illusions to your listeners. Um, instead, I'll be demonstrating an auditory one. I want you to listen to the following clip, and I want you to tell me if you understand any of it. I... I didn't understand a yeah word. same it just sounds it just sounds like static noise <laughs> here uh, let me play it again no clue yeah no sorry still nothing now I'm going to play another clip the juice of lemons makes fine punch the juice of lemons you made fine punch one, right 
Yeah. Yeah, it says the juice of lemons makes fine punch. Okay, now I'm going to play back the original clip and I want you to tell me if you understand what it says now. Whoa. <laughs> Here, uh, let me play it again. Yeah, it's saying the same thing. Exactly. I played you the same exact clip that you heard the first time. Oh, no, 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 no. Your no. To your brain were identical. I clicked yeah, the chair, I clicked the chair. Come on, man. version of the audio, you could understand the, the hell? one. Uh, this shows us that your brain is actually filling in pieces of your reality. You're not directly experiencing... No, stop that, stop that. Brain, stop that. You're experiencing your brain's Yo. interpretation of those inputs. In other oh, no. words, your brain is creating or hallucinating your conscious perception. Um, moreover, you can't really unhear the words when I play the clip now. You have no control over this hallucination. When you say hallucinations, that seems to be more related to psychedelics and drugs like LSD. Clearly, those hallucinations You stop that! Oh, damn, bro. Actually, uh, no. LSD is actually pretty different from how it's portrayed in the movies. Um, people who have taken LSD say that it doesn't really give you hallucinations. Instead, it shows that real life is the hallucination. Some users Stop. say that LSD gives them a better glimpse. Bro, they keep on showing this exact same thing over and over again. This shit's scaring me. That like, jump scaring. Bro, oh, stop, stop, um, stop. If hallucination is uncontrolled perception, then normal perception is also just a more controlled hallucination. Mm, this sounds like hippie science. <laughs> well, uh, what I really mean by hallucination is that our perception is more constructed by our brain than it is a direct product of our senses. All of this research points to the fact that um, we don't live in the world. We live in our heads. The world we perceive is constructed stop, by stop, our stop. brain. It's not necessarily representative of what is out there. Um, perhaps I'm not the best at explaining it, uh, so I'll read you a quote from one of my colleagues, Professor Anil Seth. Suck on that quote. Sussex. He said, No. We don't just passively receive the world, we actively generate Whoa, 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 hold on. The world we experience comes as much, if not more, Bro, I clicked that. Stop. Stop that. The outside in. Bro, stop we that. All hallucinating all the time. Damn. When we agree on hallucinations, we call that reality. That's a good quote. Maybe we should be interviewing him instead. So, our perception of the outside world isn't actually real. We can't That's fully trust it, as shown by illusions, as, as you've shown. Does that mean everything we perceive could just be sensations that our brain is, is making up? Yeah, uh, exactly. And, and there's a very clear precedent for that. Dreaming. While in a dream, most of oh, us stop, are stop, aware stop. of the fact that we're dreaming. We're perceiving sensations that our brains are just creating on the fly. And we simply accept that it is reality. Even if it's completely nonsensical and I'm sorry guys if you're getting uh, ear raped by that. I sure am. How our brains can Stop, bro. Minds. But how is that possible? It seems strange to suggest that our brains can render entire scenes in our heads. Ah, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be. What? Our brains have what's called selective attention. That means we hardly Stop, bro. That we're not focusing on. Stop that. Uh, here, here's a simple Damn. way to demonstrate this. Close your eyes. Okay. You walked into my office and sat down in that chair uh, just a few minutes ago, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, what color is the chair you're currently sitting in? Um, I think it was black. Mm -hmm. And uh, is the floor carpeted or hard? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was carpeted. Good, okay, what color is the carpet? Bruh, you seriously need to stop that. And, and did the carpet have any sort of pattern on it? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Okay, uh, you can open your eyes now. Mm. Ah, okay. So the floor is carpeted, but my chair is actually blue, and the carpet has a chair oh, no. pattern that is slightly green. 
Yeah, uh, getting one out of four questions correct isn't bad, but isn't it strange? You walked in the room and, and saw the floor, but didn't really notice its pattern or color. You sat in the chair and also didn't notice the color. If I changed the color of your chair or your carpet when your eyes were closed, would you have noticed? What about the, the color of my desk or the items on it or their positions? This is getting damn old. Stop with that red hobo. You've probably seen the Google logo stop, countless stop. times. Can you tell me what color the letter E is in the logo? And what about the color of the second G? If they were to swap colors one day, would you notice? Well, I have seen the logo many times, but can't seem to recall the answer to those questions. I, I, I probably wouldn't notice if they swapped. Exactly, and, and that's how your brain quick, gets quick. Stop, stop, it stop, have stop. To render your entire world inside your head. It just needs to hallucinate the tiny sliver you actually pay attention to. Everything else around you could be constantly changing, and you wouldn't even notice. So then, how do we know? All right, we seriously, stop. Experiencing reality. How do we know if we're dreaming? Well, uh, for one, it's impossible to truly know whether what you. Are ah! Yeah. I'm tired of that. Holy shit, man. Bro, I was too slow or something, man. God damn. Alright, well, before I scare myself into a heart attack, like, damn, bro. Hmm. That was so strange. Alright, well, I'm gonna call it quits now, because, yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna scare myself into a heart attack, because, well, I mean, come on now. Uh, if you guys enjoy this video, um, make, make sure to give me uh, some heat in the comment section. Tell me, like, what you think uh, I should play horror game-wise. I'll see if I can make an arrangement on doing so. And, uh, what's it called? I hope you guys are enjoying these new videos. That was scary. And if this video gets five likes, I'm pretty sure. Yep, five likes. I will make a part two. I can't tell you when, but I will. Because I'm damn near not gonna do, and I'm not doing level two right now.